Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Hi, this is Roseanne from the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Program. So I'm sitting in for James um, today. I am a coach, an enrollment coach, and a client journey coach with the program. And I like to say that I have one of the best jobs in the world because I get to watch people transform their lives inside uh, 90 days. Today, uh, we have with us Shane Tucker, who is 36 years old as of a few days ago. Um, He's got a very interesting background that we get to talk about. He is actually the owner of a tequila company. He is the owner of a construction company in um, Dallas. He is from the Gold Coast and Australia, as you will soon know when he speaks. <laughs> and uh, most interestingly, interestingly enough, uh, for me anyway, he is part. He is a professional race car driver, drag race car driver. He was just. Uh, teaching me about the difference in these things, <laughs> member of the NHRA, which is the largest professional motorsport or, um, organization in the world. Did I get that right, Shane? You did indeed. Okay. Um, Shane also is the father of two children, ages 11 and two, and has a fiance. So we are just going to start right in with Shane. Welcome, Shane. Hey, Roseanne. Thanks for having <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so good to have you because I have tons and tons of questions to ask. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a long journey. I'm sure we've got plenty to talk about. Yeah, let's start with, let's just start with race car driving. Where did that, <laughs> that come from? So I guess uh, my father um, raced back in the day, I guess, from when he was 17 years old. So I guess as a kid, I just was brought up in it. It was around it my whole life from when I was a baby. And then um, from a, I guess, from a professional level, when I was about 19, I started driving our team race car and he, he retired and uh, had an opportunity to drive for a team in the US when I was 20. So I spent a couple of years in the United States uh, trying to get a full-time ride. But unfortunately, I think that was about 2008, 2009, the whole world collapsed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember that. <laughs> And uh, ended up coming home, uh, continued my racing in Australia. But uh, I had a, I guess, I guess I had a goal when I came back. I had a little bit of unfinished business and I was uh, of the opinion if I was going to get a ride in the US, then I sort of had to had to start a business over there myself. So um, I guess I started a business in Australia first, built a construction company up to about 100 odd employees in Australia. And then uh, there was an opportunity to, uh, to get back and race in America in 2014 and uh, as that happened, um, we were at a race in, uh, in, I think it was Indianapolis, and I had an email back at our sales team in Australia about, um, from an architect firm in Dallas and uh, suggested that if there was an opportunity to work in the US, then Dallas was a thriving market and maybe we need to look into it. So um, I looked in a little bit further into the business side of it and set up a, set up a business, uh, exactly the same business what we do in Australia over in Dallas. And... Uh, the uh, the numbers lined up and everything else, and uh, I guess from then on it was uh, it was all go. And um, my business in the US now is um, my uh, main focus right now. I don't do any work in Australia anymore because the market's so strong over in Dallas. And um, yeah, built a built a quite a uh, a um, successful construction company in Dallas. We've got about eighty five employees over there, and um, off the back of that. Uh, I continued my racing on the side in a part-time basis and uh, off the back of that I um, got educated on ultra premium tequila uh, from my employee to our uh, majority of them are from Mexico uh-huh. so family and families and whatnot send them you know blank label tequila and anyone who's been to Mexico understand it's uh, very ingrained in their culture tequila and um, I ended up getting introduced to it by our local employees and uh, fell in love with it and figured if there's an opportunity to um, to create a brand and take it to Australia and introduce Australians a little bit to uh, what ultra premium tequila is, then 
it might be a good opportunity. So um, we did that and kicked that off in 2019. We've been going about a year now. And wow. um, <laughs> my job now, um, now I'm based in Australia, my nine to five job is uh, selling liquor, selling my brand. So Well, there's a good trans- transition point about how you came to how do you came to uh, the decision that maybe you ought to uh, take alcohol out of your life for a little bit? Tell me about what was happening there on the drinking side of your life. I mean, I've always been a a fairly, um, I guess, outgoing person. I like to be the life of the party a little bit. I like to organise, you know, get-togethers with friends and family, and um, you know, I want to make sure that everyone has a good time and enjoys himself and. I just I'm that I'm that guy. Whenever there's something going on, that's me. I, I organise it, put everything on, invite everyone around, and we have a good time. So um, I guess I look at my business ventures the same way. I, I, I'm extremely ambitious. Um, I would like to one day think that hope that I could um, you know create a lifestyle for my family and friends that we really don't have to think too much about you know the day to day stuff and and really can enjoy enjoy life and at its you know finest and purest and and probably um enjoy it on our terms i guess and unfortunately in today's day and age we're so driven by money because money is what um you know keeps us ticking over it's what puts food on the table um it's uh it's you know can consume your life and i guess sometimes a byproduct of, of that is is you turn to drinking to solve some of these issues so um you mean being, the stress the stress of yeah, a little bit, which is obviously something I learnt, which is a whole lot of bullshit, um, <laughs> to be honest. But, um, but yeah, I just, I, I guess I was a fairly um, social drinker and then um, I was in the industry every day, so you're introducing your product to someone and they're like, oh, are you going to have one with me? And sure, <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have a try. Not that I don't know what the taste of it is like, but by the end of the day, you've had half a dozen shots and, yeah, it's just, Starts to uh, starts to consume your life, and um, there was a point there that we were looking at some um, external investment, and I felt that uh, my position as the founder was as a leader that I need to be the best version of me um, that I can be to to uh, to take this thing forward. And if I've got, I can I can I can I can handle losing my own money. On an investment, but when other people put their own money in, then that's a whole different kettle of fish. I, I really, um, I really believe that I need to be absolutely on my game 24 7, 365 to really make sure that there's no stone unturned if we want to make this thing successful. And one of those things I, I felt was uh, cutting out the drinking. Right. Well, why? Um, it, it probably had gotten to a point where it wasn't as easy as you thought doing it on your own. I mean, why? Why well, get some coaching around it? Was it why, what yeah, that's actually a good question. So I, I've, I'm a fairly strong-minded person, competitive and whatnot. If someone says you're not drinking for ninety days, you know you can't do it. Obviously, I'm going to say, well, yeah, I can, and I won't let that beat me. The 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 issue I had was beyond ninety days. I want to do really find out the science or process behind quitting drinking for good um, or at least be in a position where you can say, look, mm, does it serve me better? You know, give me a reason to and then I will. So I haven't come across that reason uh, yet. So I, I guess uh, between the coaching from from everyone and the support that, that everyone's been given through this 90-day program, it's nothing short of incredible, um, you know, where, where I've come to where I am. Um, I looked at the people that I was chatting to throughout my journey as superheroes, thinking how can they, <laughs> how can these men and women do this um, and really take control of their life and and not look at alcohol as being a celebratory moment. Um, I was talking to someone the other day, and where I got a, I guess building a house at the moment is probably a fairly big achievement in your life. And um, my fiance said, "Are we going to have a drink after it?" And um, not that she was forcing it. She said, would you have a drink, you know, when we move in? And I said, well, no, I'll have a soda water. Um, I think I want to celebrate, you know, obviously this achievement. I think the best way to celebrate that is to stay alcohol-free as well. So, Right. 
Well, let's go back though to um, that decision because alcohol was uh, was really obviously you you identified it as a force that was get, getting in the way. I think you mentioned to me that maybe it, it affected your relationship with your fiance. Maybe. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I guess everyone's sort of got call it an anchor um, or a you know a light bulb moment in their life when that sort of switches um, and gives them probably some clarity behind change. And um, I was having, you know, constant battles with my fiance um, about, you know, my drinking and everything else. And my personality probably was, was changing dramatically. Um, And my kids would be um, probably a little distant because every time they wanted to do something, I probably wasn't there for them as much as I should have. And, um, I had a particular moment on a Monday where I had a drink and then um, I ended up was fighting with my fiance and I had the task of looking after my little four-year-old who, uh, who if anyone's got kids understand that four-year-olds don't generally understand what a hangover is. So, um, so I was feeling sorry for myself and um, we got in a conversation and she knew I was, I was fairly upset. She said, what's wrong, daddy? And I said, um, I said, I'm just unhealthy um, and I want to fix it. And anyway, so she toddles off over to the fridge and she brings back two bananas. And she said to me, um, she said, Daddy, eat these, please. She goes, these are healthy. And um, it got me fairly upset. And um, I, uh, I started to tear up and she started to cry. And she said to me, um, she said, what's wrong, Daddy? I said, oh, look, I just want to be able to fix it. And, um, and her words were, well, Daddy, you can fix anything. Oh. So from that moment, a light switch flicked on and I thought, well, you know what? If my four-year-old can identify that there's an issue and, and I can't fix it myself, then something seriously needs to be done here. So, yeah, that's 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 an anchor point for me and that's what I always revert back to. I made a promise to my kid uh, and kids and fiancé that I need to get some help. And, um, yeah, here we are. Yeah. You know, and the funny th- thing is, is... Um it wasn't till the end of your journey that I was told that you were this professional um, drag race driver. And so I did a little uh, Google search and your face came up and I'm like, wait, that can't be you because you're puffy, right? Yep. So what was going on with your health? I mean, were you having any health issues? No, no health issues. I mean, I've always been fairly, um, fairly consistent with my training. Um, I like to train at the gym five to six times a week. Um, and I guess I was getting to a point where you're training to maintain and you're not making any gains. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, your Friday, you start to come good and then you go out and you have drinks on the weekend and come Monday, you're battling it to get back to where you felt on the Friday before. Um, and it just was going nowhere. So um, I, want, I I was always thinking to myself, I wonder what it'd feel like, you know, to feel like you're at your best and you're at your peak. And um, yeah, I guess now it's I look back and if I was training beside my old former self, there's no, no way in the world you'd be able to keep up. Um, yeah. And I guess continuing to improve and, and educate myself on, on uh, what's good for my body. I guess now I, I'm pretty, um, pretty cautious about what I, what I put into my body because I think it's uh, I think it's fairly important to stay healthy and I guess it's like fuel for your car you put in bad fuel it's probably going to run bad you put in good fuel it's going to run good so right. um, as simple as that is um, so yeah I've I've definitely turned my focus on to do staying active and healthy um, New Year's Day was probably a good example of typically I'd be curled over with a extreme hangover on New Year's Day and this year I ran a half marathon I ran. 21 Ks. So. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we got the relationship part. We got the health part. Um, how, I mean, it had to be affecting your abilities at work. You, you mentioned, you kind of refer to that, but how were you seeing now that you can look in the rearview mirror, how it was affecting all of your abilities and operating as a call it CEO entrepreneur? <coughs> yeah, I guess um, you always think, when you're in that moment, you think that, you know, you're operating 
fine. You, know, you think, yep, I've got this. I've got everything going. You know, but then I guess take yourself out of that and you look back on it. You look at it. There was some trigger points where typically was a quite a simple task to try and, you know, resolve. You look at the way you were before and, and everything became a little overwhelming. So, um, yeah, I, I guess it's sort of a, it's a struggle um, day to day when, when you're not operating 100%. Like when you're clear-headed and clear-minded the way I am now, you get back what you put in and there's, it's, it's no coincidence that what's, what's happened with myself and um, my business in the last 12 to 14 weeks is a byproduct of not drinking and being alcohol-free. Um, yeah, I've got a merger happening with my company in the US um, and my tequila company is 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 extremely um, busy at the moment and it's really starting to take off for a, for, a, for a startup business. I'm extremely proud of where it is. Um, and uh, and yeah, from on a on a racing side of it, that's something that I'm going to experience in the next. I know. Here in the next I can't time. wait to see you. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, going to see how I perform um, from a alcohol free state, and uh, and I'm sure it's going to be I'm sure it's going to be surprisingly surprisingly different from from when I was drinking alcohol before. Right, and you know, one of the things that's hard for me as an enrollment coach is to help people understand the calmness and the clarity that you're talking about. Like, so when we, we still have the same problems being thrown at at us. Right. But the way we process it and handle it and refer it off, it's just, you find there's just a lot less stress, a lot easier to make decisions. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, as I said before, they're just what would normally be a simple task seemed like it was so overwhelming. Now it's just, I mean, Everything seems so simple, uh, yet uh, I guess clear for you to for you to tackle. So you know tasks and everything else, and I guess you're very creative. You 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 find that you know there's there's things within your mind that start open up. I'm a creative person. I guess I'm a graphic designer. So my hand, my part within the business on the tequila side is is the marketing side and the branding side of things and and the ideas and stuff that you start to come up with. You think to yourself, where did that come from? So um, yeah, it's uh it's it's quite amazing what the human brain and body can do when uh, when you actually pay attention to what it needs. Just a quick message from our show sponsor, Project 90, the program that helps you enjoy life more by getting ultimate power over alcohol. Project 90 helps high achievers regain their confidence, be more present with friends and family, get clear, reduce stress and anxiety, sleep better, increase focus and productivity, and feel a whole lot better. Project 90 does this by helping members quit alcohol for at least 90 days whilst providing six months of accountability and support. Program has an 87% success rate of members reaching at least 90 consecutive days alcohol free on their first attempt. Members get a one on one accountability coach, a community of like minded people to interact with, 100% privacy and confidentiality. And what's more, members tell us that it's fun. Project 90 members are mostly over the age of 35 entrepreneurs, executives, top professionals, retirees. So if you're in your late 30s or 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s or older and you consider yourself a high achiever and you're ready to upgrade your life by quitting alcohol for at least 90 days, maybe more, then you can have a free 45-minute exploratory call with one of Project 90's former clients, now coaches. If you'd like to book that call, you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule. Or if you're on your phone in the US right now, you can text me at the number 44222. Just send me the word Project 90. Send that to 44222 and the word is Project 90 and we'll email you a schedule link. Okay, let's get back to today's episode. What was happening inside the coaching program that really helped you get over this hump uh, of, you know, going, yeah, this is worth it. Because what we do try and achieve, and this is was part of my intro, is, you know, if you can um, practice what we preach, not preach, but teach inside Project 90, you should build enough wins and gains to be able to make a decision for yourself. 
do I want to continue this alcohol free journey? Do I have more gains, you know, than losses? And I think you're referring to it too. We don't necessarily go, well, let's make it a lifetime decision. That's too much for your brain. So we like to do it maybe, you know, 90 days at a time or for people on the 30 day program, 30 days at a time to keep. But what, what helps you? Um, yeah. So I guess hearing other people's stories that were probably a little further down their journey um, and the challenges they faced. And I guess, the two-week mark, I might be able to uh, relate to what they were saying, the four-week mark, and it just gave you hope that it does get easier um, and it does get, well, when I say easier, easier, you're, you're in control more. Um, you're always going to have challenges, but I guess, yeah, having the support around you of people that were in the same, same boat as you um, was extremely important um, and just understanding the tools that we need to be able to make these decisions um, was extremely important for me. I wanted to be able to go, okay, well, you know, does it serve me better? And I'm being a um, business owner. I like to weigh up pros and cons all the time. And it's exactly the same as this. I love to be healthy. I love to keep fit. I love to uh, wake up in the morning feeling fresh. I love to be present with my family. Um, On the other side, I love the feeling of euphoria that you might get from drinking alcohol. Um, that's about it. So you look at it, <laughs> five to one, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what I'm willing to. So um, that was the way I sort of simplified and broke it down. Um, what's what if it if it, the pros don't outweigh if, if the pros don't outweigh the cons, then obviously I'm just going to stick to what I'm doing. And uh, Kevin made a good comment he, uh, whenever someone asked them about you know when are you gonna drink it then? Well, when it stops feeling good. So right. when's that? And you've been able to be a big inspiration um, for your own friends, right? Because you you explained in that uh, kind of last meeting um, that because of your journey, several of your friends have been kind of following suit. Tell, tell us what you shared in that meeting. Yeah, I guess, um, I mean, my fiance told me that I was a fairly influential or powerful person within our group of friends, tight-knit friends. I didn't really think too much of it, but um, I guess when you start something like this, there's probably an element of doubt between your friends to say, oh, well, you know, we'll see what happens after 90 days or we'll see if he makes the 90 days or anything like that, and which is all fine. I mean, I can take all that. I, I, um, I guess once what I wanted to do was have the runs on the board um, beforehand and then look back and go, okay, well, you know, if I can do it because I was like the epitome of party boy. So they look at me going, if Shane can do it, then shit, anyone can do it. Right. So um, once I got there, I guess I wanted to prove, you know, that that it was possible. And, and I guess off the back of that, a lot of my friends, probably half a dozen of my friends have decided that they're going to stop drinking for 90 days. Um <laughs> I, which I'm, I'm extremely excited and proud for, um, and I, I every time they ask me how I do it, I flick James's podcast over and I said, "Look, guys, do yourself a favor, have a listen to this. Um, it's not easy without help, um, and you you have to be committed and you have to want to yourself. You really have to be honest to yourself. The first thing I did is I said to myself in the car before I actually signed up, stop kidding yourself and stop bullshitting to yourself." You have to want to do it. If you do not want to do it, you're going to waste your time, energy, and money. You yeah. have to yourself want to do it and want to make a change. Yeah, we we. I don't know if you got this concept um, inside Project Ninety. I I actually got it after. Um, but there's a difference between hundred percent all in is a breeze. Ninety nine percent is a bitch. <laughs> Once. Once you let, I mean, because it's not all rainbows and kittens, like we like to say, um, especially at the beginning when there's um, triggers and cravings and, you know, we just don't know what to do with it. But if that 1% starts creeping in, it makes it so much more difficult. Um, if, you, if you got your eye on the prize, 
which is simply just 90 days. All I want is the time and the, and the space to figure out what it feels like at 90 days. And that's a short thing, right? That's why we do 90 days. I think definitely when, as you, as the, the weeks start ticking off and you get to probably your sixth or seventh week, maybe longer, maybe, you know, eighth or ninth, um, Kevin made mention about this and I really sort of honed in on it. He said, look, now it's time to really turn it on. I think that's important for people to hear because they're always going to be thinking, well, okay, is this as good as it gets? Is this as good as it gets? If this is as good as it gets, maybe I'm going to go back to what I was. Well, no, it's up to you to be able to push through the boundaries and 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 continue to see what's on the other side of it. I think that's one thing that you really need to be important on. Oh, okay, well, what's, what's next beyond 90 days? And keep planning forward and making sure that you obtain those goals. What did that mean? Um, I, what did that mean to you when Kevin challenged you with that? Where were you in your headspace and where did you want to go and what helped? I guess I was just like, okay, well, this is great. I'm getting through this and I'm ticking the weeks off and whatnot. You know, but what happens when the 90 days is up? Do I start thinking about alcohol again or or do I go down another route and go, okay, well, what's beyond 90 days? What what uh what for me what what can i continue to do um to stay you know on track and i think i decided to shift my focus again to um fitness and health um so i've decided to make challenges for myself i'm going to run a triathlon in may and i just think it's important to set those set those goals for yourself and something to look forward to too um you know before uh, you were always looking forward to the next weekend when you're drinking i mean that's that's not a not a real, I guess, uh, ambitious goal. I don't think. I think you need to look <laughs> bigger than. I know, you know, in retrospect, but it seems so fun at the time, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does seem so fun. It does seem so fun. Well, okay, so um, you're here on the other side of ninety days. I forgot to ask you. You're uh, one hundred and eight days. Well, you said you forgot your counting, but one hundred and eight days today. Yeah, one hundred one hundred eight days, roughly. Yeah, um, it's nice when we don't count. I literally just count for the purpose that I'm a coach and people like to know where I am. Um, yep. But it, it does begin to be irrelevant to your decision. It's not like collecting a, you know, a, a reward. It's just living a reward. You know what I mean? So you have another um, site in mind too that we briefly talked about and that's getting into racing again so i'm i'm excited to hear about this is this definite or a plan yeah look if i uh if i get to the us um for the merger with my business then there's a race at the beginning of the year for uh down in florida gainesville uh race which is i think about the 12th 13th 14th of may somewhere around uh, sorry of march somewhere around there um, and I'd like to jump back in a car again and um, and try my skills, see if I don't, see if I can still remember how to do it, and um, I guess try my skills this time, very clear headed and clear minded. My reaction and everything else is so much quicker. And our sport relies heavily on your reaction. Um, you, uh, it's it's uh, yeah, it's very it's won and lost by thousands of a second. So that's one thing I've noticed that um, being alcohol free is you're so sharp. And, uh, and that's something I'm, I'm keen to, to put into practice. Right. Well, the evidence that we've been discussing in terms of relationships, um, health, more clarity at work, I'm assuming they are definitely going to transfer into race car, drag racing, right? Well, I'm, like, I'm hoping so because I've always, already thought about what I'm going to do when I celebrate a win. Obviously, it's not going to be with champagne. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, is there a lot of drinking in that industry, in the in the racing industry, or do you think when people are? I guess post race, yeah, there probably is. Like you go back to your hotel after qualifying, and you might have a drink at the bar. Um, you know, you go back the end of the race. You know, if you do well in the race, you might have a beer. Um, it's like in everyday life; it's how it consumes us. Um, you go to dinner, you might have a drink. So, yeah, I mean. I think it is. I think it does. I mean, it's 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 as prominent in a professional sport as it is, as it is, um, I guess, in everyday life. I think um, it's just a social 
way of connecting with with your peers as well. Um, I guess probably on a race on a race night, uh, if you're going into race day, you, you're definitely not going to have a drink. But um, you know, it's that slow drip, like James said. It's that slow drip. No matter if you start on Wednesday and you're clear headed by fr- by fr- by Sunday, there's the damage that's done in between that. So right, right. Um, we've talked about so many areas that have improved over just a hundred days or a hundred plus days. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that you want to share with people about living this alcohol free life? I mean, you are just really, especially your age, I have to say, because a lot of, um, project 90, and we definitely, uh, work with people in their thirties and early thirties, but the more you climb up the ladder in age, I think the more prevalent, you know, um, the uh, issue of, yep, we need some coaching, you know. Uh, is there I, think, other? Go ahead. I think probably the biggest thing that I, if any, any message that I can give for anyone who's thinking about it is um, I, not, not saying I'm perfect or anything, but you look at the facts liquor industry, young, uh, got a fairly fairly extensive social group with, with friends and love to party a lot. Um, right. They're around at 24-7 and still had the ability to get through it. And, um, you know, anyone anyone's capable of doing it. Um, you know, you just can't make excuses. Don't start tomorrow. Don't start Monday. If you're ready to do it, just jump in and do it. And... Um, and I think uh, once you get into it and you, you, you see it through, you'll realise that there's more to life than uh, turn into a bottle. Right. And that's what I think um, we're kind of playing with our mantra here at the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle. And I like our most recent um, thing that says, um, you know, the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle, it's a movement. Um, and that's what people need to believe because a lot of people believe they're they're stuck instead of realizing they could be a leader in this movement. Um, like you, I mean, your friends are following your example, right? And um, it's uh, changing, changing the world one alcohol free life at a time. You know, you're out there explaining the benefits and I'm sure you're going to be inspiring so many other people, especially because you're only 36 years old. I just think that's really admirable. Um, yeah, thank you, and uh, and I couldn't have done it without all the the support around me that I've had over the last ninety days and beyond. I mean, um, hearing everyone's stories and and uh, the challenges that they face. I mean, it, not everyone is going to have the same uh, path and journey. Um, I think it's just important to support one another around it. And you know, if you got some advice, share it. I mean, uh, if you're feeling that you you've got challenges coming up, let them know. I'm sure there's an answer out there from everyone else because we've all been through it. Yeah, and I think that's the other thing about um, this alcohol habit loop that we talk about. It's a very lonely loop in your mind if you don't share it with other people, right? And I think that's what you're referring to is we all have this loop in our brain thinking we're the only ones having the loop when every other friend we have is having that same thought. <laughs> and uh, That model in the beginning, you're like, what am I doing? I've got this event coming up. I'm nervous. I, I want to make sure I fit in. You know, there's always that, that element of doubt. Okay. Am I going to feel uncomfortable? Well, in the end, no one gives a shit. No <laughs> one gives a shit if you're not drinking. Yeah. They may, I found that at first they wonder if you're going to judge them. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't care if you're drinking, but they care if you're going to judge them about drinking. Right. Yeah. But then when you like love them unconditionally, you know, it's like to me, like, oh, I don't care. This was just wasn't working for me. And yeah, um what you guys do. Like, yeah, and then they're like, ah, oh, come on, let's let's go to the bar, you know, and it doesn't matter. But there is an uncomfortable moment, and that's a lot of what we coach as well. Is how do I'll, I- sell I'll, sell, I'll sell it to them all day long. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just uh yeah, exactly. So, um, well, Shane, is there any last thoughts you'd like to share with people before we sign on? Oh, uh, look, I think, um, I think we had most things covered, but, uh, I guess just reiterating that, you know, uh, if I, if I, I could give any advice, definitely, definitely, definitely jump into it and make sure you're hundred percent committed. 
Yeah, I agree. Shane, it's been great to go through this process with you and to be able to interview you. And um, I think that I may be, you need to come in, we use a, a platform in Project 90 called Marco Polo. So now that you're in the Marco Polo alumni, you need to announce to us when you're racing because I might become a new fan. <laughs> Ooh, I will uh, I'll definitely, when I was locked in, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, good luck to you and all of your endeavors and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.